Hi guys, this is Jason on Blackcom and I'm here with a review of the Samsung Galaxy A9 2018. The very first four camera phone. It's got four cameras at the back side plus one extra at the front. So may, you may as well call it the first five camera phone. So it debuted this fall and we're here with a review of this high mid ranger, which also has super slow motion, at least on paper. It promises to offer that capture while in real life, not quite super slow motion anyways it's priced between 500 and 600 dollars it's made of glass and metal it's quite sexy and i'm about to take it for a spin it's available in lemonade blue bubblegum pink and caviar black and obviously we have the lemonade blue now the handset you see here is a dual sim version and it comes with a glass and metal chassis there's glass at the back metal frame and another glass panel at the front now of course everything is fine and dandy it's premium it's sexy looking but it's also rather massive i found it to be a rather big phone closer to the definition of a phablet it's a 6.3 incher and even though it looks comfy in my hand the average user and basically everyone will have a hard time using it with a single hand the grip is i would say solid and decent the back side will draw some fingerprints and some grease so you may want to use a case i found the bezels to be a bit big compared to what people want nowadays and i also found the buttons to be rather comfy although a bit noisy so uh, it's pretty sexy it's reasonably comfy especially if you're going for two-hand usage in landscape and i'm loving the uh, lemonade blue hue and uh, too bad it doesn't have any sort of waterproofing and certifications like that one thing's for sure it looks better in real life than in the renders and pictures now as far as the screen is concerned you have probably guessed we're dealing with a super amoled it's samsung after all 6.3 inch super amoled 2220 over 1080 pixels infinity display and experience uh, let's see how it goes so we got our typical test video here and we're playing it let's uh, fill the whole screen with it. So I'm very happy with the colors. They're very vivid typical for a super AMOLED rich colors deep black solid contrast even in the sunlight uh, excellent brightness and wide view angles Plus we also have the curved corners of the image for extra immersivity And we also have a gif feature and a pop-up play feature in case you want to keep things things interested Now we put the screen under the microscope and came out to the typical setup of the pixels pentile matrix and uh, then we went further and we analyzed the brightness achieving a top level of 489 lux units those are measured with our special lux meter with this value we beat the sony xperia xa2 the huawei max 20 pro and the galaxy note 9 which is no small feat still we got beaten by the sony xperia xa2 ultra iphone 8 and xperia xz2 as usual, Samsung offers an array of customization features for the display. You can find them in the section aptly called display. There's auto brightness, there's regular brightness, blue light filter. Uh, you can mess around with the screen zoom, the font size and style. Also, there is a screen mode, which has been on Samsung phones for years now. Adaptive display, AMOLED cinema, AMOLED photo and basic. So it uh, caters to your needs. Full screen color balance, you can, get it to, you can set it to cool or warm with a slider and advanced options with an RGB slider. Then there's the easy mode, the full screen apps, the home screen, the icon frame, status bar, screen timeout, block accidental touches. And you can also mess about with the always on display with some clock styles. And you can also pick what other things to show. I got the face widgets here with the music control, schedule, alarm, weather. So the always on display has evolved over the past years. Overall, a very solid screen. And we move further to the processor. It's a very familiar face, actually hugely familiar. Snapdragon 660, you've seen it on the Nokia 7 Plus and the Xiaomi Mi A2. This time it's accompanied by 6 GB of RAM and 120 GB of storage, which to me sounds pretty impressive. Especially considering you also get a micro SD card slot. The phone doesn't suffer from any trace of lag, so there was no problem with that. No matter what we did, what we installed and what we played, everything was spot on, lag free, no stutter. And uh, let's see what games we played here. So. There's a special section for games. As usual, it's pretty hard to find it. Game launcher, here we go. And we have uh, Riptide GP Renegade as our typical benchmark game. I also played a game uh, that was focused on uh, Star Trek. 
and uh, rest assured that uh, if you enter the options and select a full screen experience the whole screen will be filled by this title but you should really remember to do that in case you want to benefit from the full screen experience okay here we go a riptide gp renegade or typical benchmark game is here we're checking out the frame rate and all that and once again if you want full screen you go to the settings and everything will be solved I'm doing a bunch of tricks and this is it lovely frame rate no freezes no stutter and no lag so gaming checks out fine now if you want to talk about the benchmarks we also did those uh, and uh, let's see what came out of that experience so uh, we go here and we see the typical Antutu, Nanomark and so forth. So I'm going to start with Antutu 6, which is this one here. In Antutu 6, we beat the Xiaomi Mi A2 and the AllView Soul X5 Pro. We score below the Nokia 7 Plus and the Huawei Mate 20 Lite. Then we move to the more relevant Antutu 7. This one here had a better result. It beats the Xiaomi Mi A2 and the Huawei Mate 20 Lite plus the Zenfone 5. Scores below the Nokia 7 Plus and the Huawei Honor 10. I did not forget about the Geekbench test, this is it, and this is the multi-core score that interests us. This one surpasses the iPhone 7 Plus, which is a pretty big deal, and also the Mate 20 Lite, scores below the Nokia 7 Plus, Galaxy S8 Plus, and uh, also the Huawei P10. We also did some benchmarks that have to do with the graphical aspect, Slingshot. In Slingshot, we were able to beat the uh, Xiaomi uh, Mi A2, also the Nokia 7 Plus, but we scored below the Huawei Honor 10 and the Meizu Pro 6 Plus. Basically, uh, we're about on the same level as the Huawei Mate 20 Lite and the Nokia 7 Plus, sometimes below them, sometimes above them, so that's the level we're at Nokia 7 Plus, Huawei Mate 20 Lite. If you're wondering about the temperature, we used a special thermometer and measured the device heat. We achieved 34.8 degrees Celsius, so we, this was achieved when playing the game Riptide, you saw before, and when doing a benchmark, we achieved a temperature of 34 degrees on the dot, GFX bench, no overheating and no problem, and we also have a heat map for you, we're using a CAT S61 phone and a special flare sensor, and this is what the heat map looks like. It dissipates heat like a champ, doesn't have any seriously heated areas at the back side. Now, this is all about the performance. Let's talk about the battery. It's a pretty okay sounding 3800 mAh battery. It promises uh, up to 15 hours of Wi-Fi browsing or up to 19 hours of video playback. Now, let's see how the device did in our own tests. Let's not let the paper dictate what we're dealing with here. So, uh, we're first of all talking about the video playback time in a loop and this is it finally so when it comes to video playback in a loop 14 hours 57 minutes this is excellent this is close to the level of a battery phone it beats the samsung galaxy a8 2018 nokia 7 plus and galaxy note 8 scores below the sony xperia x82 ultra and the huawei p20 pro but i'm still pretty impressed by this time for video playback and you just saw a spoiler before for the continuous usage this is pc mark and it showed us 11 hours 46 minutes which is simply great it's better than the Xiaomi Mi 6, Nokia 7 Plus, Sony Xperia XZ1 Compact and the Galaxy Note 9, which is quite excellent. Still, there are better phones out there, Sony Xperia XA2 Ultra, Cat S61 and the Moto Z Play. The charging is done in 2 hours and 20 minutes, is the equal of the HTC One M9 and after 1 hour you're at about 48% and after 30 minutes 27%. The settings of the battery have to do with power saving which can be set to off, mid or max and basically if you're not using this phone for its four cameras you're probably going to use it for its kick ass battery and its long hours of usage. Now on the audio front there is no love for stereo speakers here there's only one at the bottom here and uh, you will not cover it in landscape as you can see there's no reason for you to cover it as you're holding the phone like this. Now as usual Samsung has thrown in a lot of customization options and a lot of tweaks and a pretty generous equalizer uh, just like they did for the display that's what they did for the acoustics we got Dolby Atmos got an equalizer with these genres and we also have the advanced area with 10 custom channels these two knobs for extra bass treble instrument or vocal UHQ upscaler tube amp pro concert hall adapt sound the works they will tweak your experience, your surround, your bass, treble, instrument, and so forth. Okay, so let's actually listen to some tunes. Okay. 
Okay, so some impressions. I would have to say I'm pretty satisfied with the bass and uh, the speaker is quite loud. It can cover a conversation of, let's say, small kitchen or bedroom. Um, the voice is warm, the guitar and synthesizers are very nicely rendered by this small but powerful speaker. There's FM radio here and there's a pair of headphones which you saw in the unboxing. The typical pair of headphones that Samsung offers with the Galaxy A series devices. Comfy and loud. Speaking of loud things, we did a decibel meter test and uh, we have two results to show you. The first of them being 89.5 decibels. This one is for an acoustic sample, typical standard test acoustic sample at the front and the back of the phone. It's better than what the Sony Xperia XA2 offer, the Huawei P20 Pro and even the Asus ROG phone. Still, there are louder phones out there in this department, the Asus Zenfone 5Z and the Nokia 5. The main test is still the gaming one. And when it comes to gaming, we got to 101.8 decibels, which is mighty impressive. It beats Xperia XA2, HTC U12+, and Nokia 7+, still below Nokia 8 and below the Asus ROG phone, which is basically the champ in this department. It's a very solid acoustic, solid acoustic experience. Too bad there is no stereo speakers. Finally, where are the camera front? I'm going to start with the front side. I have a singular... 24 megapixel shooter for your selfies, but the kick ass array is at the back side. So let's take them one by one. First of all, the one at the top 8 megapixel ultra wide angle 120 degree shooter f2.4 aperture. The second one, this one is a 10 megapixel shooter telephoto, which is a code name for zoom. 2x optical zoom f 2.4 now the third one is actually the main camera 24 megapixels that's the one you're going to be using most often f 1.7 and finally the last one uh, you can see it's the smallest lens here 5 megapixel the depth sensor f 2.2 aperture and it's used for live focus or bokeh there is a flash here led flash and they promise you super slow motion it's not non 960 frames per second as far as i can tell it's probably closer to 480 uh, frames per second and there's also special uh, four direction lighting for the selfies portrait selfies portrait for the front and back camera scene optimizer flow detection ar emoji bixby vision and i'm going to go to the gallery because i don't want to bore you now we have 300 plus shots some of them were taken outside some of them inside and some of them during the night let's start with those taken outside so cloudy day with some pieces of stun and i started straight with the main camera this is 24 megapixels there are a lot of details as you can see so you can cross that off your checklist then we have the wide angle shot which is pretty impressive it beats what asus has offered on the zenfone 4 and what lg has offered on the lg g5 they corrected stuff on the g6 and this is actually closer to the g6 it doesn't offer that annoying fisheye that some wide angle phones have so i'm actually pretty happy with this one so regular shot wide angle shot and telephoto shot using the 2x option which is actually not bad but you'll see later on that if you zoom further you won't be very happy with the result now the selfies were okay actually the first ones were not very flattering when i got rid of the beauty option they started coming to place more and here you cannot see my pores but if you get rid of the beauty option you may actually see them excuse the tired face lots of reviews lots of stuff to do anyways i'm happy with the texture of the face the texture of the eyes and also the hair and the clothes and even the background looks fine for a 24 megapixel camera i actually expected this now uh, we go further here because we have a lot of shots now we also took some hdr shots and hdr fixes stuff so if you're unhappy with the way the let's say clouds look in a certain area hdr will fix your shadows and your contrast in a pretty nice manner this is one example you can see here highlighted the actual contours of the clouds more shots here pretty weird sky in this area i would say it's weirdly blue even though it wasn't exactly that blue in real life anyways uh i forgot to say that i'm pretty happy with the color calibration even though there's not much, much color here but when we do get some color they're pretty okay i'm talking about the reds the blues the light greens everything checks out and of course even more selfies but this time i also activated the portrait live focus feature this is the white selfie so you can actually catch more persons around you and this is the portrait one which is actually not bad didn't cut off my ear didn't cut off any hair 
so it knows how to delimitate between your visage and the background. Not bad, I have to say. Actually, not bad. You can fight something like the Huawei P20 Pro, even, or maybe even the iPhone X. So, portrait selfies, pretty nice from me. Okay, even more shots, some beautiful landscape ones of nature, still impressed by the clarity, details, and the colors. But once again, if you're trying to zoom in after 2 or 3x, you will lose some clarity for sure. And here we have some extra colors for you extra details and uh, of course I also took live focus shots with these toys they're not bad at all even though the blur settings are limited so there's basically two or three steps and the blur is a bit exaggerated if you ask me kind of uh, um, decreases a bit of your fascination with the uh, subject for the foreground but you can tweak it on the go and you can see your subject how you want it Okay, so that's it in a nutshell. People have been wondering, is the Nokia 7 Plus still the best mid-range phone out there? Well, it is because it has better zoom than this one, but this one is a very solid rival. So this has been, has been the series of photos taken outside, outdoors, uh, in a pretty mixed day with the sun and the clouds. And I was very happy with the results, especially the details, colors, clarity, uh, selfies and bokeh selfies. Two things that didn't convince me were the zoom, and the bokeh with the main camera, which feels a bit exaggerated. Other than that, I have to say I'm pretty happy with the result. I would say it increases the quality of the Galaxy A8 2018, beats the Nokia 8, beats the Nokia 7 Plus, uh, but only minus the zoom, and it beats most Xiaomi phones, most Asus phones, and most Motorola phones. Now, we also did some indoor shots. I actually attended an event, a gaming event, and I have to say I'm not very impressed by what the device produced so why am i not impressed because i have to say something so in the same context i had an iphone 7 with me my own iphone 7 and i found it to be better color wise and in the way it can handle the lights which will shine straight into it this one catches more light but the iphone 7 was more accurate color wise indoors and i also remember using the zenfone 5 for a similar event a comic con in the same setting and it was better so if you're a journalist and want this phone for your tasks be advised when going to gaming events or events with flashing lights and powerful lights which the phone may not be able to face in a pretty nice manner also a lot of moving people so take that into consideration if you want to use this indoors now, uh, we're happy with the daytime, not very happy with the low light, oh, excuse me, uh, we're happy with the daytime, not very happy with the indoors, let's go to the low light and see what happened there. By the way, we have some extra shots here of beautiful scenery, you'll see them in the full text review. So, here we go, indoors are done, we're back outdoors during the night time, these are the low light shots and they're actually not that bad. Things are pretty bright, as you can see, during the night time. And even the wide angle shots are okay. Traditionally, phones with wide angle cameras tend to distort the image during the night time. Yes, I know it also happened here, but not to as much of a degree as I expected. Now the flash makes things a bit too white, so I would say it shines maybe too much and makes the image too white. And here are several more shots. In general, the clarity was okay, the details were spot on. And I found the street light halos to be okay in size. Even though if you switch to the wide angle camera, there was a bit of color modification, but nothing truly serious. You can see here the difference, regular shot, wide angle shot, and you can also do some shape correction apparently. The zoom wasn't as impressive during the nighttime as expected, but then again, not as impressive during the daytime either. Several more shots. The street halos are a bit too big for my liking, but I've seen worse, so in the end it behaves like one of the good mid-rangers. You will not see here something, well, uh, some phones out there have missed shots. This one, I didn't spot any missed shot or any problems with a so shot, so that's nice. Uh, let's see what the shape correction is all about. So you got original and corrected. Hmm, interesting. Uh, it's probably part of that flaw correction thing, so it's nice to see. Anyways, one of the best mid ranges out there when it comes to photos, that's for sure. I have seen better, uh, like the Nokia 7 Plus for example, but it beats something like 99% of all the phones that have wide-angle cameras. 
in the video department things will be complicated if I look them up here so I think I'm going to look them up with a video player which has got to be this one here camera and let me start with the uh, photos taken outside or better said the videos okay so something to notice here we have excellently calibrated colors from what I remember this should be a 4k video pretty nice clarity and all and I suggest you keep things 4k because I wasn't very happy with the full HD so when it's 4k you can actually confuse it with a video shot with the Galaxy S8 for example in full HD you're getting stuff like 17 megabytes per second 30 frames per second mp4 and that's what we're dealing with here now this was actually the first video I've taken it's full HD and the colors were okay the panning was nice but the sky was a bit deformed color wise just a bit nice microphone I could hear people talking around me I could hear the cars I could hear all the ambience so the first shot is okay uh, then we have a slow motion one which is clearly not a 960 frames per second one doesn't feel like it probably only 480 frames per second then there's the stabilization test I walked around and there was a bit of a flicker and shakiness you can see the image trembling you can clearly see that so not the best when it comes to stabilization and I also noticed some dynamic range problems with the sky in the distance okay this one is done we see another video here this one has pretty nice clarity pretty nice setup of the sky and its exposure and all that decent level of details but the zoom is a bit underwhelming where you apply the tele option so there's that okay so i suppose this one handles the zoom a bit better let's see it this is it this is the zoom one instant tele zoom things look okay if you go past 2x lots of grain and lots of noise i want to highlight the microphone you're probably going to be happy when you're going to a concert and this is the selfie camera that's how it films my face looks okay color wise brightness wise you could do some vlogging with it some youtube but the background you can see it's a bit murky it's a bit shadowy not the best dynamic range and exposure and all that but if you're focused on the face it's okay if you don't care about the background should be decent enough for you extra colors here here we go and if you look in the distance you'll see that there's a bit of graininess where there should be fine details my advice stick to 4k don't try any stunts and be prepared for some weird dynamic range and uh, not that good of a zoom okay so that's that uh, I would say that it actually goes past the quality of the Galaxy A8 2018 I looked it up that one burned the colors more so in the end you're not losing you're gaining Still, I found the Sony Xperia X XA2 and the Nokia 7 Plus to be slightly better in filming. Uh, this was the daytime, let's go to the nighttime and also quickly to the indoors. Not impressed by the indoor shot. I know it looks okay on the small screen, but on the big screen, there's a lot of grain. It has troubles adjusting the exposure to the light. So once again, for events, you could do better than this one. And the zoom is also a bit underwhelming okay uh, i promised you low light but i want to start with the other one here we go now here we start uh, straight into refocus which is not flattering pretty nice panning no motion blur when capturing motion decent enough colors uh, street light halos are a bit big things are shaky when you zoom in there's a bit of grain some odd reflections but the colors and clarity are pretty okay and here we're actually moving we're in motion the level of yellow is acceptable the microphone is good nice clarity big halos this one actually beats the sony xperia xa2 and it, i find that 90 percent of other mid-range phones will not do better than this so in the end it's quite okay but to be honest we need more for the end of 2018 people are actually going indoors and you saw me being disappointed by the indoor captures now let's go further and by further I mean web browser you can use Chrome or you can use Samsung internet I opted for this one let's load up gsnon.com here we go Samsung internet 
the pretty decent speed and a pretty decent set of benchmarks. For input, you're using the stock Samsung keyboard with an extra numeric row. And these are the keys, pretty large and well-spaced. On the connectivity front, I already informed you that we're dealing here with a duos, dual SIM version, basically. Uh, there's also single SIM version out there. Got an USB Type-C port at the bottom, LT category 9, Wi-Fi A, B, G, N, A, C. There's MIMO support. There's also Bluetooth 5.0, ANT+, GPS, GLONASS, Beidou, Galileo. The calls were loud and clear, and we also did a speed test. Uh, so let's check it out. These are the results we achieved. So when it comes to 4G, we achieved 241 mega per second downloads, 67.9 mega per second uploads. On Wi-Fi, 388 mega per second downloads and 25.7 mega per second uploads. So that's quite nice, quite solid, especially for a mid-range phone, not a flagship. Now on the software front, things are a bit disappointing. It's only Android 8.0.0. I wanted Android Pie or at least Android 8.1, nope. 8.0.0 with Samsung Experience 9.0 on top. So things aren't hugely different from the last time you saw a Samsung phone. I'm talking about the interface. It's glossy, it's colorful, it's playful, it's got Bixby as an aggregator on the leftmost home screen. It's got a Bixby button right here if you want to ask it stuff. It's still no match for Siri, Google Assistant, even Cortana. These are the things it aggregates. You can opt for other stuff here. You got your temperatures, your calories, your news, your Giphy, your recommendations. And that's the Bixby home screen. Now you're doing multitasking like this. You can do the carousel or you can do the split screen. And let's find another app like maybe the, um, let's see, Samsung internet it would be a good idea. So you're doing web browsing. You're also going around the settings and you can also apply a sort of pop-up play like feature to have a smaller window overlapped on top of a big one. And that's it for multitasking, you carousel, split screen and overlapping. Then if you want to customize the experience, you got the wallpapers, themes and widgets and home screen settings. The widgets are typical Samsung. Everything has white borders, white background, transparency. And here are the settings related to the grid, layout, badges, apps, and so forth. And you can opt for portrait mode and landscape mode, so you can alternate between them in the home screens or not. If you want to only keep portrait, there's an option for it. Okay, so that's that. If you're swiping down, you're going to see notifications and quick settings as usual. Mobile hotspot, blue light filter, torch, etc. And uh, here we have the settings. There's the connectivity, sounds and vibration, notification, wallpapers and themes, and the advanced features. We have a gaming feature, which is basically a collection of games, smart stay, one hand mode, finger sensor gestures, quick launch camera by double pressing the power key. And let's actually do it. And that's how it's done. Okay, multi-window, smart capture, direct call, dual messenger, used to separate accounts for the Facebook Messenger, send SOS message, which may save your life. Here we have device security, you can scan for malware and dubious activity and find batteries that are, excuse me, find apps that are draining your battery. Then we have the lock screen uh, and biometrics. Here we have face recognition and fingerprint scanner. There's something cool here. I don't know if you know this, but uh, Galaxy S9 inaugurated a feature that lets you only swipe gently on it to register it and to unlock it. And that's what you can also do here. So uh, let's go back. You can gently swipe on it to unlock the phone and it works like a charm. It truly really works pretty fast and I was happy with the speed and accuracy of the fingerprint scanner. Now the face unlock, a bit slow for my taste, but nice accuracy as well. Okay, those are the options and the settings. Let's talk about the apps. I counted them, there's 36 of them. And of course we have the Microsoft Ones, Word, Excel, PowerPoint, OneDrive and LinkedIn for productivity. Google Ones, Samsung Ones, Smart Things for your smart home stuff, voice recorder, email, mail files, internet and health with your calories and steps and other things you want to be updated on. These are the things that you have to keep an eye on and some questions about your sleep. Okay, that's that. Those are the pre-installed apps. There's several more. There's a Samsung Note, there's FM Radio, there's a secure folder, there's Galaxy Apps, which is basically Samsung's own app store. And that's it in a nutshell. I think it's time to give the verdict for the four camera phone. Now on the pro side, it looks very nice, especially in this color. It's got a bright screen with pretty crisp set of colors. Uh, I found the performance to be quite okay. 
solid battery. You can actually use it as a battery phone if you don't uh, typically use the four cameras. Uh, it's got a loudspeaker at the bottom. It's got a great clarity of the pictures and nice colors of the pictures and pretty satisfying selfies. Okay, bokeh overall, even though the main bokeh has some limited options and uh, not bad wide angle shots compared to what I've seen from LG and Asus. Okay, 4K videos, fast 4G, fast Wi-Fi, so that's that. Those are the pros. On the cons, it's too big. It's actually a big tablet. It's pricey, close to the Galaxy S9 in price. No stereo speakers, no waterproofing. Unimpressive zoom, if you go past 2x, 3x, you're underwhelmed. Stabilization, not that good for video. Indoor shots were truly disappointing. And only Android Oreo 8.0, and that's it. And Bixby remains not impressive. It feels like an experimental phone and it's actually better than I expected. Usually experimental phones tend to fail. Now this one has one of the best wide angle cameras I've seen on a phone that's a mid-ranger or that's a semi-flagship. So it does its wide angle jobs okay, bokeh job okay, but the zoom could have been a bit better. In the end, if you're not happy with the camera, you can use it as a solid battery phone. I'm really meaning it. Uh, so it's crazy amount of time of hours will certainly be worth it. 14, 15 hours of playback, maybe 11 hours of gaming. Those are enough for me. In the end, what matters is here. It's an upgrade of camera from the Galaxy A8 to the A9, as the name shows, so Samsung delivers that. Has excellent clarity and colors, nothing can be objected about the main camera, only some stuff about the tele one and maybe some for the bokeh one. Powerful phone, Nokia 7 Plus rival. I would say overall it kind of beats it, but the price is too high. Make it go down $100 or even $200 and then we'll talk about beating the Nokia 7 Plus. This is it from us, we want Android Pie on it as soon as possible, and this has been the review of the Samsung Galaxy A9 2018 here at gsnron.com. Bye bye!